<laughs> so it's the time for the package from China time. But this is an old school system that we have seen before. This is a 12 inch mini arcade machine. But this is the latest edition, or that's what it's saying. They improved it, and that is what we're going to check out today. The way how they picked it up is absolutely great. Then we're going to get ourselves the 12 volt adapter. I noticed by using it for, let's say, an hour or so, it's getting really hot. Also, we're going to get a controller, and yep, we can play together with your friend. Then we're going to get the packaging and the way they basically like put everything together in the box is absolutely amazing. A lot of plastic fantastic, a lot of, let's say, screen protectors, stuff like that. So I must give them extra kudos for that. Okay, so when we've moved all the plastic and I'm curious what are we going to get with this device. The first thing I'm noticing is there's still a screen protector on it, but it still gets some bubbles underneath it. A little bit of a bummer. So I'm noticing that when booting up, we're still going to get the NJ9000 boot up display. But also after we're going to see the loading screen, I do notice some differences. But we're going to talk about that later. It also comes with the toilet paper manual, like always. And yep, it comes also in English language. So it's pretty damn awesome. It will explain you how the device works. But most of the time, there's not a lot of information about it. You just need to figure it out yourself. All right, so the button layout, it's a quite basic button layout, six buttons, but that's the thing that we're only going to need. So at the left, we're going to get the joystick itself. The joystick is your typical Chinese wiggle stick, and there is not like a very good octogate beneath it. But the thing I've noticed that we can do some moves in some fighting games, so that is absolutely amazing. So the joystick is responsive, and I'm guessing this is more like these weird knockoff Sandler clones. The button layout, let's take a close look at that. But okay, so what you're going to get is the six button layout with the long travel Chinese buttons and the touch itself, it's not really bad. I must say I've played a lot with it before making this video, but it would be great to have like Samba clones at least. Then we're going to get ourselves the coin start and ooh, plastic, the reset button. But there are some things that we need to know. First of all, like the coin start and reset are all fun and work fine. But the first option you only have is when pressing the coin start in the main, you can pause the game. That's the only thing. But when you're pressing the reset button, there is no quick load or quick save menu. Nope, when you press it, it just instantly go back to the freaking main menu. So how about the case design? I personally really love the case design itself. So first of all, the angle of the display is absolutely amazing. Then we're going to get ourselves the way how this thing just looks. It's full made of plastic, so you do have a plastic fantastic feel to it. So later on we will do a teardown and some of the plastics can be removed. But I can tell you, if you're going to remove it, you're going to be destroying it because the way how they made this, yeah, it's all like clicking and some, let's say, piece of plastic will break off in the end. Because it's not like really flimsy plastic, but it's not made to basically do a teardown with it. But later on, we're going to take a close look at it. So at the bottom bar, we're going to get four like tiny rubbery feet for giving it some grip. At the back, we're going to get the input for power supply, the SD card, the on and off switch, and we do have an HDMI. So the device itself does have the option for adding an additional television. Then we're having like a 12 inch emulator game station sticker out the back with the call the NJ3000. So that's basically the original name of the product. I do like this, yeah, what's it like this very nice pattern at the back. It's not like a sticker so far I can see, but let's plow it on. So the NG9000, that's still the original name. And when you're looking at the viewing angle of the display, I was quite flabbergasted that you're going to get a pretty damn nice display. And I must say, like when you're looking at most of the cheap device I've reviewed, first of all, you're going to get these weird 16 by 9 aspect ratio monitors. And also we're going to get ourselves like very horrible, you know, let's say viewing angles. But here you can see like it looks pretty damn cool. And also I'm noticing the software, they changed it out. Yep, we've never seen it before like this. We do have a better menu. And I can't recall with the first generation of these NG9000 models, we did have like a lot of, let's say, screen tearing or other issues, but also a bad view angle and some dead pixels. We have now the support for MAME, Super Famicom, Sega, NES, and GBA. And when pressing into the menu, or you just press start to get into the menu, we're going to get this basic list, like the previous model. We do have like two screenshots, basically giving you an idea what it is for a game. So they did not change out the second menu. It's still like messed up with names are too long for the box. Hey, but let's take a close look at the front. We're going to get a USB two times and a volume control over here. But the volume is very disappointing. So sadly, the volume control is all fine and working good. But when you're looking at the audio quality, it's pretty damn bad. 
The controller itself, it's okay quality. It's not the best controller I've seen, but it's better like the chemical ones you get with Super Console X. Okay, so when you plug it in, it all yeah, it just works instantly. Like it didn't have any issues whatsoever. You can navigate the menu, so that's pretty damn cool. So let's boot up a game and we'll show you that it works just fine. So we can press the select button. Here you can see like the Play 2 works. And it can still recall with the first edition I've reviewed back today with this machine. It had like a lot of issues. I couldn't get like the second Play to work. It was like a lot of messy when it comes to the software. So this time they, they managed to fix it. So that's one of those improvements. The HDMI also works very well. So basically what you can do with this is like plug it in a monitor and you just have yourself like a game machine. And yeah, the downside is the display doesn't work anymore. So you need to look always at the freaking display. Okay, so basically that works just fine, including the VGA. So let's pull it out. And here you can see it goes back to the arcade machine. So that functionality works very well. Okay, so let's try a couple of main games and see how good the performance is. I'm noticing a small delay in the freaking joystick. It can be a combination of the game. Wow, that is quite annoying. Let's see where the buttons are. Alright. Man, that plays quite weird. And I think it's more like a combination of... You can just hear the click come very late with the freaking joystick. That's a major problem. We don't have the issue with the buttons itself, so it's actually like an input of the freaking joystick that is a problem. Alright, so let's try a different game. Oh, this game responds way better than the other one. I think it's also like a combination of the joystick and the game itself. But so far I can see like the games mostly run just fine when it comes to main or UG or whatsoever. I'm quite surprised to see how good the MLA performance is. I don't see like a lot of problems when it comes to the gameplay itself. Don't hear any weird sound effects. I already told you before, like the joystick is super responsive. Absolutely amazing. Even the freaking super comes out instantly. Alright, so next up let's try a 60-bit game and so far I can see and hear everything seems to be running just fine. The biggest downside I still find of this arcade cabinet, that is the audio. They upgraded the menu, they upgraded a lot of things of this device, but they didn't upgrade the freaking speakers on the inside. It's such a, such a missed opportunity. Alright, so next up, let's try the sticking bit Genesis, and I've already noticed the audio is completely messed up. So that's kind of why we're always going to get with these devices, and somehow they messed, there was always something they tried to mess up, you know? Such a bummer, because when it comes to the speed, everything in the game runs just fine. But if you really don't mind the audio, beside that, it seems to be running just fine again. That audio sounds so weird. Yeah, that's really weird. Oh, even the ring sound is messed up. Let's see how the graphical part is. Come on. Yeah. So when it comes to the emulation, also for the 3D part, it works just fine. Okay, so next up, let's play a little bit of 8-bit or Famicom. That seems to be working all fine. I don't know if a lot of screen tearing or not at all, so that's great. So here you can see like they messed up the 60-bit Genesis, but they seem to be like having the 8-bit nailed. Oh, 
But unfortunate for the GBA, Game Mode Pawns, they absolutely messed it up. It even, I wouldn't say unplayable, but you can see like it's uh, dropping in frames and the emulation is pretty damn awful. Let's lower the sound, I cannot really, can't take it anymore. But I guess you know, this is the game that F basically wins the best. I have seen some games like fr freaking like dipping to like 20 frames per second, like absolutely unplayable. So with the original review I didn't do in Teardown, I must say that I did regret it up to today. So I'm more like, a lot of people were asking me, like, hey, can you do a teardown? And I was more like, okay, I got this new model, so let's do a teardown. But I can tell you when I'm doing teardowns of these devices, especially when they are made fully made of plastic, most of them like click together. So I'm hoping I can do a teardown and basically like keep this thing like in working condition. The only downside I already noticed, there's only two screws I cannot reach. And the reason why is because they are too deep inside the machine. But let's remove all of them that we can remove, for example, the ones over here that holds the shells in place. So already get some movement over here with the bottom plate. So let's remove some more screws and yeah, there's another parkers and just see how far we can tear down this device so we can just take a close look at the inside. So the downside is like the bottom plate have been clicked together and when I didn't like very gently tear down, I, yeah, I couldn't get everything like removed properly. Okay, so let's remove like the freaking zillion freaking sparkers at the bottom because oh man, there are so many at the bottom. Oh. But the only downside is these, I cannot remove them because my screwdriver is not long enough and I have no of them are fitting. So like this one, it's too thick, it's too long enough, but you can see like I can't get it in. So that's a little bit of a problem. And yeah, so we cannot do a full teardown. But I can give you a quick look in the inside. Here we can see like everything, how they assembled it. And the main board is kind of interesting. It looks like a CM3 module. But again, I cannot remove it. They hold the freaking module with two screws and some clicking mechanisms and I cannot really reach it. I can reach in with my hand but I cannot even remove the cooling block so also they glued it on it. So you can see like the monitor itself goes straight into the main board so if you want to do modifications you need to have a driver board or a replacement monitor. It's going to be quite expensive. All right, over here we're going to get the buttons and the joystick can be replaced and upgraded if you want to. Here we do have like the Samba clone, so if you replace all the buttons with some decent ones, I think it would be like a way better experience. Here we do have the speakers left and right, but already uh, notice it that these things are like sounding like shit and explains because they are like very tiny. Then we're going to get the USB connection that goes straight into the mainboard over here. And the same goes for the cable three. It's a quite interesting way how they assembled everything, but this is basically what we're going to get on the inside. But okay guys, that rounds up this video. Let me know in the comments what you think of this. Yeah, I, I just want to put my pros and cons in this. I personally really love the casings, like just how it looks. And yeah, the display itself is pretty damn cool. The display is in my opinion better than the first model or having a brain fart, that's also possible. But besides that, yeah, there are some pros and cons, especially when I look in the emulation. Just a bummer that they messed up the GBA. Well, thank you for watching. Consider subscribing, hit that little bell, become on the Wicked family, and I will see you in the next video. Mm hmm.